Murphy's Builder Supply is where you need to go for all your home improvement projects and hardware needs. They've been serving folks in this area since 1946. Murphy's offers some products and services that you may not know about. They now sell ammunition, both bullets and shells. Murphy's also sells personalized tags for dog collars. They build customized screens for windows and doors. Murphy's can rekey locks, and of course they can make keys. They cut glass for windows, plus Murphy's has monthly door buster specials. Check their Facebook page to see what's on sale. Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings Restaurant in Jessup is now open for business, practicing social distancing, but still serving that great food that Damon's is famous for. Come inside or come to the drive through but Damon's is open inside and welcomes back its customers. The menu's the same, the service is fast, and the food is fantastic, and the sauces remain the same, mild, wild, insane, or inferno. The number is the same, 588-WING, 588-9464. Damon's Restaurant on West Cherry Street in Jessup, dining room now open for business. Come on in and enjoy a great meal today. 801 here at the Big Dog WIFO World Famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply, Damon's Drive Through and the Restaurant there, and of course Prime South Bank. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. It's Wednesdays with Workhouse. I also got the sheriff here and talked to him about the election results last night. But Bill, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are y'all doing this morning? Doing great. The big story, of course, in the state is all the problems with the election uh, polling machines up there in Atlanta. Uh, the Secretary of State. State, Brad Raffensperger and House Speaker David Rawson already opened up separate investigations in the election management, really focusing on Fulton County, where they state the largest number of problems were reported. So what do you hear in the, what all took place up there? Yeah. Hey, things went smoothly well, down here. So what happened up in Atlanta? Let's talk about that. I talk about this all the time, and it's leadership. I don't care if it's your local church, your Lions Club, or whatever. It's leadership. And here, here's the Here's the difference. Sammy Thornton and my other two election uh, directors, they had their poll workers prepared. They did dry runs. They held events, invited people to the public. You know what they did in Fulton County last night? They were opening boxes, and poll workers were seeing those machines for the first time. So don't blame that on the Secretary of State's office. That is... When, when it comes election day, his job is, is almost over. The, the, each election is run by the election directors. And every year, so don't scream voter suppression, it's the same old counties having the same problems because of leadership. And kudos to the, like I said, to Tammy and, and Darren McCoy over in Claxton and in the folks in Titanol, they, uh, uh, they got their act together. And that's, I mean, that's the bottom line. Well, well, we appreciate Tammy and Susan. They said we had them on several times talking yeah, about the that. process, yeah. you know, and I thought the machines worked pretty well. I said I liked the new machines. I said it was easy instructions. Um, I liked the fact that you get a paper receipt to get to look and see what you did vote for and whether or not it's correct or not. So, I thought it went pretty well here, so, uh, you know, it's interesting that they had all those problems up in Atlanta, sad to see, but uh looks like it's going to be a mess for a couple of weeks. But you're headed back to Atlanta next and, week. And those are the people that want to blame it on everybody else but themselves. Yeah, they're, they're crushing they're the right. Secretary That's of State, well, Brad Raffensperger, already, so they're saying it's his fault. You know, they're blaming him as the leader. So the Raffensperger's yeah. office denied there were any technical glitches with the voting equipment itself. Instead, he said, like you mentioned, poll workers simply didn't know how to encode voter access cards and their pin numbers correctly or plug machines into power supplies. <laughs> Raffensperger's office not taking any blame at all. He's, he's like you. He said, look, we did everything we could to educate and tell people how to do it. And as you mentioned, it's all about the people in those communities educating their voters on what's going to take place. And that offered, took place here in Wayne County, fortunately. Yeah, and he offered every election director, they said, they, we put money in the budget. They, he said, we'll come down. We'll do a training for y'all. And, of course, our, our metro, uh, they didn't take advantage of it. Like, like I said, that we had reports of Fulton County opening up boxes last night. So, yeah, don't, <laughs> uh, don't get me started. Well, let's talk about the session. You're headed up there next week. Uh, it's going to be an interesting session. We talked uh, many times with you and Stephen Meeks and uh, Blake Tiller about the budget. Uh, Blake's been extremely busy already having budget study committee meetings. So your thoughts on what's going to take place? Uh, I ask you all the time, do you think it's 
it's going to be interesting how it works, first of all, as far as the social distancing, things like that. Uh, you still don't have an idea how that's going to work, do you? you know, like I questioned before, are you going to be in an office? Are you going to be in the assembly hall? Do you have any idea how it's going to work once you get up there? Yeah, we've, we've been sent memos of how they think it's going to work. And as you know, when you've never done something before, you can have all the best plans in the world. So the thought is we're going to watch it from our office, and then when it comes time to vote, uh, we'll you know march in six, eight at a time, go in one door and out the other. So they, they've got very detailed plans now. Again, when you've never done something before, it, it remains to be seen. And um, and I understand Representative Meeks and, and uh, Senator Hillary couldn't be on this week. Uh, I, I do want to send them. <laughs> Those two are two of the busiest guys in the General Assembly right now. You know, the reason we almost all legislatures meet in the, in the winter is because back when almost all communities were agriculture, well, that's, that's what Stephen does. This, this is a horrible time for him to go into session. He, he's got his, uh, his hands full. And then, um, and of course, Senator Tillery, uh, with the budget, I, the amount of phone calls, emails, texts, everybody saying, well, cut everybody else, but don't cut me. Um, I, I can't imagine what the, the pressure he's under. So anyway, those guys are working as hard as they can and, um, trying to make it work with this, this part time job. <laughs> Another busy man is the governor. I understand he's going to have a press conference other day. I think they said it's tomorrow. Do you have any idea what he's going to address? Do you know if it's today or tomorrow? Can you clarify that for us, or do you know? Uh, I don't know because it has been changed. Uh, they, they've talked about two different, so I, I don't know. I have a feeling. Um, I'm no more privy to those conversations than, than anybody else, but um, I have a feeling we're going to talk about a lot of the numbers that are starting to come in, and as you know, you know, we've been preaching 14% cut for weeks now, and then last Friday, uh, he said, no, we're going to look at 11% because the numbers are just incredibly, the economy is on fire. Um, everybody has seen the stock market, what it's done the last few days, and it's almost at pre-pandemic levels, um, so that's really good news. We we get data from a lot of different sources, and, and, you know, he caught heat from opening up Georgia, but I think history will prove that he was right, um, that he was looking at the right sets of data. We look at uh, traffic counts. We look at point-of-sale figures, sales tax, uh, income tax. So as we're looking at those things, the economy is rebounding way faster than we thought. So um, I just got off the phone with uh, Commissioner Ward of the Department of Corrections about some issues in his budget, and um, and may not sound much, but the difference in eleven and fourteen percent when you're when you're spending billions of dollars uh, is huge. And so, hopefully, even so, what will happen when we do the what we call the big budget? Um, that's why we come back six months later, and because we're we're guessing what the revenues are. We we have no idea, especially in times like this. So what will happen is we're going to budget on 11% cut, and then we're going to come back next January, at which point we'll be halfway through the budget and say, oh, well, we guess low. We always try to guess low so that we have extra money. That's the conservative way of doing it. And so we'll take that new. So hopefully revenues will come in stronger than we think, and we'll be able to add some of that money back. But that's, but that's why we adjust the budget halfway through every year. Well, as we mentioned, the budget is going to be the big story, but national news uh, and statewide news, uh, two issues that are going to be discussed in the legislature that will come up possibly for a vote is one on a hate crimes bill where the state of Georgia is one of four states which doesn't have one. Also, there's a push to do away with the citizen's arrest law on the books. Uh, where do you stand on both those issues? You know, um, I think Stephen and I both, so the Senate has not tackled the hate crimes bill. It was a House bill only, and Stephen and I both, voted against hate crimes bill because it's we have a tough time already in our judicial system convicting somebody because of all the hurdles we've got to go through and then to add a motive like well what was bob thinking i mean we got to get inside your head i mean everybody please not guilty to begin with and then to turn around and say well what was jonathan thinking at the time um so now we got to 
do that. But having said all that, um, I have tried to be open-minded and listen to the movement. Um, if it comes back, um, I, I may rethink that as, as far as, I, I don't know where I'm at. I'd love to hear from folks on that. I, I'm looking at it. Um it's definitely going to be discussed. It's amazing, you know, it's interesting to see who all is pushing it right now and who's coming out forcefully for it. I mean, David Rawson wanted it before, and um, he's definitely leading the campaign right now. I saw where the lieutenant governor is trying to decide where he stands. Uh, the governor seems to be receptive to it, so that'll be a big decisive issue on him. If he comes out for it, I'm sure it'll, you know, gain some momentum as well. So there's just a lot in the national media, statewide media on these issues. So it's going to be interesting to see how all that plays out, with especially a, a shortened session, and with the budget being top priority. You're talking about 11 days. So it's going to be interesting to see how all this plays out in that short time of a period between you guys so, up there. It'll be interesting yeah. how it all plays out. Yeah, and so to that point, was all the chairman got letters uh, a week or so ago from the speaker saying, um, we need to know what bills absolutely cannot wait until next year. So I, I sent a letter about midnight last night um, from the committee I chair, Industry and Labor, saying um, I've only got two that, that I would like to see um, for, for some folks. Um, the rest can wait till next year. So, so yeah, he, he has made it very clear that, uh, we're going to have a very limited schedule. We're there to focus on the budget. It's the only thing that we're constitutionally required to do. Um, you mentioned a couple. Well, there's actually three related to everything that's going on right now. Um, the hate crimes, the stand your ground, and the... Citizen's um, arrest. Citizen's arrest. Yeah, that's, you know, that, my, thing, my that, came, opinion, that's, that big issue came down at the Albemarle Arbery hearing down there. Third, right. I had the chance to go down to that, but... You know, that's what they claimed, the McMichaels are claiming they, that that's what their defense is, that they they were trying to make a citizen's arrest, and they're still they, claiming they self-defense. No so I went down there Thursday. That was kind of a wild uh, scene down there in Brunswick on Thursday. I was glad I was able to get in, uh, thanks to the sheriff. I said I, I called earlier to get in there. I showed up, and it was a packed house. I never saw so many media satellites in my life, but... I walked, I walked in, and the first person says, well, sir, I don't think you're going to be able to get in. I said, well, where's the sheriff at? So the sheriff <laughs> came over and said, come on, Bob, I got so I got a front row seat. They took care of me. So, But it was a pretty wild scene down there, but uh, that's uh, an issue it that's was, being well, you know brought up to the legislature now. That they think if they do away with the the law that's on the books right now, that that would solve a lot of problems. So I'm sure that will be discussed up in the legislature as well. But. Again, we've got yeah, another guest. Yeah. We just want to okay. thank you again for Wednesdays with Workheiser. Again, uh, when do you think you'll head up to Atlanta? I mean, the 15th is the first day. I'm going date. up Friday. We start Monday. I'm going up Friday to get ready. I'm going to go visit my kids and grandkids uh, over the weekend and then hit it hard Monday morning. Okay. Well, you just mentioned you want to know where people stand. So, again, give us the best way to get in touch with Bill Workheiser for people listening so they yeah. can express that view. The easiest one you can do and find my legislative email or the easiest one to remember since we're on the radio is bill at workheiser dot com. Um, and those are two just real quick, those are two very different issues. Citizens arrest and stand your ground. I I don't care about whether we do away with citizens arrest or not. Stand your ground is a little different. If you come busting in my house, um, my only citizen is gonna be which gun do I uh, grab, not if if I grab one, so, um, you know, and then we'll, we'll tackle the others. But I know you got a guess. I'll let you get. No, we understand, but I said uh, one thing I, I want to discuss with you and invite you to, you know, once the session's over, we want to get you back in studio so we can have you yeah. here in person so we can discuss how the session went because it's going to be an interesting session. And, again, I appreciate both or all three of our representatives calling in and like I said, I'm sure once the session gets underway, Stephen Meeks and Blake are going to be calling in on Monday and Tuesday as well. So it's going to be yeah. pretty informative to let us know what all is taking place up there in the Capitol, how it all plays out, and what all is being discussed. So, again, we just appreciate your time. Again, Wednesdays with Workhouse, a popular show here on The Big Dog, and we appreciate every Wednesday you calling in and talking with us. We appreciate it. Well, I thank you all for doing this. We are very fortunate to have this ability to be able to talk with you all and let know 
Uh, we don't take it for granted, so we appreciate y'all. No All problem. Right. We appreciate you. And, again, just stay safe. Uh, again, uh, the COVID-19 is still out there, but uh, I'm like you. It looks like the governor's made the right call. More and more people are getting out. The, you know, they see it here locally. Uh, more and more people are out in restaurants eating uh, and uh, listening to our morning guy, uh, Clay Travis. He was talking about nightclubs and comedy clubs that are opened up in Nashville, and people are calling in saying how well received that's been. And people are just itching to get out of their house. And I say that, I told you last time I talked to you, I gave it March and April. I looked at four walls for long enough. I said it's time to get yeah. once May hit. I was ready to go. So I've been out eating, having a good time, and I feel safe, uh, and I feel like we're moving in the right direction. So hopefully the – We'll see baseball, football, schools get back. Uh, that's the plan, hopefully, that we can get back to some type of normalcy. All right. Well, thank you. You and Johnson have a good one, and we will talk to you next week. Okay, Bill. Thanks again. Again, that's Wednesdays with Workhauser, State Group Senate Bill Workhauser. Again, headed back to the legislative session. The session gets underway on June 15th. And now we trans or we just move right into our next guest. We've got the incumbent chair of John Carter with us, election night last night. Four candidates on the Republican ballot. Chair, if you turn, proved to be the top vote getter last night, 2,220. Chuck Mosley, 1,333. Toby Cameron, 1,135. Paul Drotty, 1,011. So it will be a runoff. The runoff is set for August 11th. I did confirm that. Uh, I went on the website and found out the reason they did that. The governor pushed all that back due to the COVID-19 thing. They set those dates. So the date is August 11th. So it's about a month away. Or two months away, I would think. Well, actually, uh, early voting will start within three weeks. So we okay. basically got three weeks before three weeks we start early voting. That's right. It's another, so it'll be another three weeks of early voting for the right. And then the then the uh, uh, election day primary, I mean runoff date will right. be uh, August eleventh. Well, I talked to you last night. And again, you're pleased to be the top vote getter out of the four. Again, in the runoff, like I said, seeking another term. So just uh, your overall thoughts of how the election went and how you feel coming out on top. Oh, I think it went well. Uh, uh, you know, he, everybody was out uh, working hard as they could uh, to try to uh, be the candidate, to be the man, so to speak. Uh, I think it, it went well. I mean, it, it was uh, pretty clean. Uh, uh, there was some stuff on Facebook that, you know, it'd go up for a little while and get taken down. It was kind of ugly toward, it was mainly between uh, uh, a couple of candidates there. I had a couple of rocks thrown at me, but you know me, I don't throw rocks back. But I heard that uh, I don't have face cracks, so I, I don't not, either. But I heard I heard some of the stuff that you know. But, well, I don't uh, either, but you know, I'm just saying uh, it gets uh, they good. Uh, I'm technology challenged. Right. So well, you, what they call I screenshot, and I get, they'll yeah. send it to me, text it to me. I do know how to text, but that's well, when about I interviewed it. you last night, you made the comment that some false information has been out there that you'd like to clarify. So I, I'm sure well, that's what well, you. Well, there, uh, you know, for example, that, that we spent four million dollars in overtime. That's uh, could nothing be further from the truth than that. I don't know where that, how that got out there. Uh, but it was being spread like wildfire, and that's you know the, our whole budget six point nine million, so four million of it can't be just overtime. Right. Uh, you know, and I've got five budgets. I don't just have the jail and the sheriff's office like they think. I got nine one one. I got search and rescue, and I got uh, safe kids, mm-hmm. uh, which is four budgets. Excuse me. We're looking at the numbers. Like I said, there's two ways to look at that. Like I said, you did come out on top, but if you add the three totals of the three candidates, more people voted against you than for you, but. Is that how? No, I guess that's how some people could look at it. I mean, there's two ways. There's all kind. The good news is you're in the runoff. Well, I'm looking on the positive side. Right. You know, glass uh, half full. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'd I'd rather be you know ahead than trying to catch up. Uh, but you know, it's going to depend on on how the voters uh, of the two candidates that that didn't make it, uh, which 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 one of us, me or, or Chuck, that they decide to go with. All right. Uh, well, I coming. think we've done a good job, but if the people of Wayne County decide they want to change, that's what will happen. But I, I believe we have done a good job. You have to restructure. You have to you have to deal with uh, uh, staff shortages like we did last year. When, I mean, you know, when you're nine short on the street, four in the jail and three in 911 in a small uh, agency like us, that's crippling. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to get back because – uh, it takes a while to get people trained, and if you have to send them to the academy, you've got 12 weeks of the academy plus uh, on-the-job training. Those things uh, uh, take time. Like I said last time, you know, it's it takes a good three years to get a good seasoned deputy. 
these drug arrests continue, and one drug that keeps on popping up is what is fentanyl? I don't. I mean, that seems like a new drug that keeps popping up on these drug. It was a very, very high powered. Uh, they use it for pain killing. They use it for surgeries. They use it for a, a lot of things. But it just, uh, I mean, just a little bit. Uh, we had a lot of overdoses, you know, a while back when we got the fentanyl the last time. Uh, this was a large amount. I mean, you're talking about eight point eight and a half grams is, is a lot of fentanyl, or right? somewhere in that neighborhood. It may not be exactly eight point five. Uh, but that's a uh, well. For example, anything over four grams, four grams or over, is trafficking. Uh, and this is, uh, I know that we got six grams, and then uh, our information that we passed on to uh, McClinney, Florida, they got six grams off some people from the Wayne County that we knew were down there. Uh, we just we got this uh, 8.5 grams. That's, that's a lot of fentanyl, and, of course, uh, we're working with our other agencies, such as DEA and, and our task force as well, uh, to try to... Uh, you know, we're still investigating this case, so yeah, I don't, there's no telling where it'll go from here. Right. And we're under a COVID-19 pandemic, you know. I'm curious about the jail, you know, how that works with inmates and things like that. How do you work that system? Well, or knock on wood, like knock on wood, we haven't had uh, COVID-19 in the jail. We, uh, uh, we've opened it up a little bit as far as the lobby goes, but we got, uh, you about have to be buzzed in from the outside to even get to anywhere, even in the lobby part. Uh, we're not doing any, any, uh, of course we hadn't been doing visitation. We do video visitation. Uh, we can do, you know, some of that. Of course they got the ability to make phone calls as well. Uh, court call, we're doing it, to, uh, you know, by video too. We're not actually bringing the inmates to, uh, from the jail to the courtroom. And uh, state courts trying to get set up where they can do it as well. We've been doing it in Superior Court for, for a good while now. And the courts are starting to open up. Problems we have is I can't deny people access to the courtroom. Even though we've got it marked off for the social distancing, then uh, we've got we issue masks uh, in both courtrooms. Uh, actually, in state court, we're taking temperatures and doing just a small uh, uh, medical quiz there if you had a fever and those type of things that, that we're instructed to do. Uh, when will so, Superior Court kick, kick back up with trials, things like that? Because all that's been put uh, on hold. Trials, I'm not sure. With, with COVID-19 and trying to pick a jury and, and close quarters in a jury room, I don't. you can't so, social distance there. So right. I'm not exactly sure how, how, how long that's going to be. But that's going to be up to the, uh, I believe it's the chief judge of the Georgia Supreme Court that's, that's been making right. the calls on pretty much that and sending it down to uh, Judge Scarlett in, in uh, our circuit actually issues most of the orders that come to us. Uh, I had a chance to talk with Judge Scarlett just the other day, as a matter of fact, I had a good conversation with him. <laughs> so, I was a, yeah, when I went down, that's one thing that people seem to have a consensus about is the judges in the circuit. You know, We're fortunate to have the judges that we do have in the circuit. I was, when I was down in Brunswick, I was talking to some of the bailiffs down there, and they were talking about the same thing, how the, all the judges just seem to, you know, do a good job in the circuit. We're blessed to have the ones we've got. We are. I mean, I, I can't say enough about our judge. Our judges are excellent, uh, all five of them. I mean, you can't be Judge Scarlett. Uh, uh, I've been on him a, a long, long time. I've known Judge Harrison a long time, as well as I knew Judge Lane before he was a judge. And obviously, Judge Kelly, he was the mm-hmm. DA, so I've known him very long. I've just... Uh, I didn't know Judge Guy very well, but since uh, he's been on the bench, you know, I've got to know him. Well, actually, when he was running for office, I got to know him. But since he's been on the bench, I've got to observe him, and and he's an excellent judge as well. I mean, they all have a a good demeanor. They're they're you know they're firm when they need to be, but they're you know they try to take in considerations as they should everything. Well, like I said, your men were busy again this weekend with the train derailment. How did, you know, your thoughts on the train derailment? Not something happens every day in a city like uh, Scriven, Georgia, but that was kind of a big news event. Saturday it, it was, and I, you know, I, the sheriff's office, the city of Scriven, all their all their workers, all the volunteer firemen, everybody that came together, uh, you know, and then setting up, of course. Uh, you know, I, I'm fortunate to have a, a, a chief deputy that was EMA director that's got all the certifications and knows how to handle that stuff. Uh, uh, just like it was his, his, you know, his, his and the, uh, Scriven's call with the fireman to fog that peroxide to keep it from getting any worse than it was. So, you know, those are just, you know, it might not be sound like much, but it was a, a good call <laughs> on his part. But, you know, he knows these things. Uh, 
And uh, like I say, I'm fortunate to have him when we get to, to these kind of disasters because he knows the hazmat stuff. And he knows more than I do how to how to go what book to go to to look up and see what what uh, what you're dealing with chemicals and so forth. Well, like I said, you're the top vote getter out of the four candidates. Uh, the election held last night, so how soon do you crank back up between now and August 11th? Do you take a break, or do you still are y'all are you in constant um, campaign mode? You never stop. You never uh, I've stop. been campaigning since January first, two thousand five. <laughs> you don't ever stop. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you you know, you're out there every day, and really, you know, politicking is basically good manners. You speak to people now, but with COVID, you kind of have to give knuckles or bump elbows. You can't shake hands, and, you know, and it's hard. Uh, even, even if we didn't have COVID-19, for me to get out and go door to door and do those things, it, it's it's hard to do. The sheriff's job is not uh, 8 to 5, trust me, uh, and, it, and it doesn't end on Friday at 5 o'clock either because, you know, you're bone uh, – well, since you just mentioned train wreck or the tornado or other things that we had to do, uh, just like people don't realize what we had to do for the election. We had to, we started at 1230 on Monday, guarding those poles when they set those machines up. The only two that we didn't have to be at was uh, Unity, which had a church, I mean, had cameras and alarm and the county barn, that uh, boat and precinct had uh, alarms and cameras, so we didn't have to cover those. But every other, we had to have a deputy there 24 hours. So we we broke it into six hour shifts and and did that. But those are things that cost money. Uh, again, if you just joining us, we got Sheriff John Carter in the studios again. The election held last night. Again, if you had not heard the results of the election, again, give the totals again. John Carter came out on top. His vote total 2,220. Did they, they have the percentage breakdown? I saw it no, last that's night. one thing I don't like. I love these vote machines and all, but the, the way that it spits it out, I, I would like to know by precinct yeah. and what percentages. Right. Uh, and they say they can do that. I'm yeah. supposed to pick I, it up today. Well, I talked but, to Tammy. She said it's going to be like 50-some pages long, though, and all that. So that's right. So yeah. I mean, around last we, night. we used to have, what, I about three or four pages? I'm not positive. And I said I'm not a good mathematician, but I think I saw the percentage last night was like 39% for your total. 2,220. I'm not sure if that's correct, but that's what I saw I last night. 39%. And then Chuck Mosley comes in second. He had a vote total of 1,333. Toby Cameron finished third with 1,135. And Paul Drotty finished fourth with 1,011. So, again, the winner of this Republican primary squares off against the lone Democrat, Kevin Johnson, who you defeated soundly four years ago. Well, and, you uh, know, individually, if you look at that, it's about two to one on, on the, all three of them. You know, for mine, it's, it's close to two to one, but I'm not sure percentage. I'll have to figure it out. I, I apologize. I left my yeah. That was the one thing I didn't like about the, the the results last night. Is like I said in, in the past, you know, you used to, they used to break it down percentage wise right there on the sheet. This this does not have that. Uh, the printout just has the total, but doesn't have the percentage breakdown. So, but again, or, I'm but, sure you we, know, can, used we to can do get percentage that. by precinct too. And that you know right. that was that was. That was some information, right. you know, I like to look at. And that was the only thing that disappointed me last night. Like I said, I think people, like I told Tammy last night, people in Scriven, and Odom, uh, Pleasant, right. they, they like to know what the breakdown is, who, how they vote for. So I'm sure we'll get that from Tammy this week. But like I said, she said this. <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> you know, I had a hard time going through the sheets I had last night trying to find the races. So but I, I do like be, the sheet. That'll be a tall task to get those. So. Yeah, I do like the sheet when you go in there. You know, you can actually look at it and see what you voted for. Yeah, I'd like, to, yeah I'd, I'd like the new voting machines for sure. I mean, I'd like yeah. I said, I'm like Johnson. I like the fact that after you voted, you get a printout and you can check and make sure it was, you know, the computer did it, and, what you voted well, for. And if not, you can go to the poll worker and get it. And I don't, that's what I don't understand about what's going on in, in, in Fulton County. I mean, the uh, we had no problems with ours, and we had a little power problem at one state. Well, it didn't take long to get that straightened out. Well, it was nothing new to machines. Well, I think Bill Workhouser hit the nail on the head. It's all about you know educating the people that you know. Like I said Tammy and her staff got together, and they said they even had uh, demonstrations before the vote where people. I mean, they had to where if somebody in Wayne County wanted to see the voting machine and see how it worked. They, they set up demonstrations before the voting where you go down there and look at the machines and. Get yeah, I know they went before right. different groups and showed right. them how it yeah. worked, but I, maybe they need to get to, you know, to have the classes where they got some kind of certification that they certified to to work at the polls and operate the machines. I don't know. Right. That's, uh, you know, like everybody else has to have some kind of license or certification to right. do anything. But well, again, we just want to thank Tim and her staff. Like I said, we oh, they did a great job. Yeah, I mean, she does a great job. And like I said, we appreciate them being on the show and 
for you know get everybody updated and give them all the information they needed in preparation for the vote. I thought the you know I, I drove around most of the day yesterday, different polling places. Everything seemed to run smoothly. The, I thought it was a steady crowd at most polling places throughout the day, but everybody seemed to be cordial and you know doing what they were supposed to do. I thought it went pretty smooth. Well, it, it did, and most of the you know the other candidates that had you know people at polling places like we do. Uh, you know, as I talked to to each each group, everybody was cordial. Everybody was getting along. Of course, you know, uh, a lot of us are friends. We just had to be on different sides right. with the, with the candidates. But uh, uh, those things went well. It was you know, the me and the uh, two of the other candidates were out there at ever poll. But uh, we congratulate uh, all the candidates. I said it's it's a difficult thing to get out there and run a campaign. You know, it's a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of phone calls. Uh, but you know, it takes a lot to do it, but uh, you know that's what the well, I process think is it, all about. I think it's more. I mean, it's more difficult to me of being an incumbent as as I've done through the years. It's it's harder because you can't get out there and see. You know, you depend on when you get invited to civic clubs or the other things that you go to. You're out in that, but you don't get to get out. I mean, going door to door is almost impossible for an incumbent to do. You just you just don't have the time, or either you can't do your job. Uh, but you know, when when I'm out, of course, with COVID nineteen, you know, you you don't see as many people in Walmart and other things. That's where you usually run into a lot of folks. Well, we talked about that with all the candidates. I mean, with this COVID nineteen campaigning, so different now. You know, it's all it used to be about you know shaking hands and kissing babies, things like that. But COVID nineteen, <laughs> social distancing, like I said, you got to do the elbow bump and things like yeah, that. Yeah, give some nuts, one or two. Yeah. People. <laughs> but we appreciate you being on the show. Like I said, um, you said from day one you were running for reelection. You're you're you got over one hurdle. You got a couple more hurdles to get before another term. But again, we'll have you back on the show. Like I told Chuck last night, we'll wait till the July Fourth holiday is over with, and then we'll crank it back up and get y'all back in here and discuss the campaign before August eleventh, and, and then we'll go to November and see how it all plays out. But uh, well, again, it, it, it sounds good. And like I said last night, Chuck Chuck's a good man, and I look forward to uh, the challenge, and uh, uh, I'm sure he does as well. So. Uh, you know, and it's, uh, trust me, it'll be clean between us. I guarantee it. All right. Yeah, two good guys running. So, again, it's a choice between John Carter and Chuck Mosley that voters will decide on August 11th, and then they'll go to November, and we'll go from there. But we appreciate you being on the show. Like I said, you've been a constant guest, and we appreciate appreciate all the information, appreciate the press release we get. Like I said, the one thing you mentioned last night, it seems like the, the drug cases are coming more frequent here in Wayne County. A lot's been d- being done on the – or against drugs here. Well, the restructuring is working. I believe it is, and I think you're going to see that, and, and you know, it's going to continue to work. Okay, dope. Again, that's going to do it for today's World Famous Butch and Bob show. Again, just a reminder, tomorrow we've got the candidate running for U.S. Senate from Appling County. She'll be our special guest tomorrow, and then Ken Cribb will join us Friday to talk about how the first week of conditioning has gone for the high school and middle schools here in Wayne County as we look forward to the high school football season. And tomorrow on the news, just to highlight, like I said, they talked about the graduation ceremony July 18th, what the plans are. It was a lengthy conversation at the board meeting last night. They're going to try to do everything they can to make it as normal as possible, maybe limit the number of tickets that students get. But uh, they're hoping for a nice ceremony on Saturday, July 18th at J.C. Stadium, and you can hear that conversation tomorrow on the local news. That's going to do it for today's World Famous Witch and Bob show. Everybody have a great night or great day. Butch and Bob Show on WIFO at 833, brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, and Prime South Bank. Good morning from the big dog WIFO on this Wednesday morning. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings Restaurant in Jessup is now open for business, practicing social distancing, but still serving that great food that Damon's is famous for. Come inside or come to the drive through but Damon's is open inside and welcomes back its customers. The menu's the same, the service is fast, and the food is fantastic, and the sauces remain the same, mild, wild, insane, or inferno. The number is the same, 588-WING, 588-9464. Damon's Restaurant on West Cherry Street in Jessup, dining room now open for business. Come on in and enjoy a great meal today. I ain't no Robert Ripley. I'm just plain old Woody Folsom. 
that you can believe this or don't. Thank you, friends and neighbors, for giving Woody Folsom Automotive a near record month last month. I ain't never seen nothing like it, but I sure would like to. Y'all come see us. Call us or click us at WoodyFolsom.com, home of the free lifetime powertrain warranty. Save nine grand off MSRP on heavy duty 2500s and 3500s. A real good feel good deal. Better get to Baxley for some 0% for 72 month financing. 0% on Silverado, Sierra, Tahoe, Yukon, Equinox, Acadia, Terrain, and all new Buicks. Yeah. Find new roads and do some dealing. We're also loaded with certified GM pre owned vehicles that have undergone 128 point rigorous inspections. They're Chevy clean. Woo. Pay over 1,000 pre owned in stock. All made. All made. Some restrictions apply. See dealer for details. We'll give you a deal. deal. A real good feel good deal. Talk, 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 talk to me. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is important not to put your health care on hold. Preventative testing, lab work, elective diagnostic, and surgical procedures are available at Wayne Memorial Hospital and are vital to ensure your continued good health. At Wayne Memorial, we prioritize your health and safety. You can be confident that all appropriate safety measures remain in place to protect our patients. At Wayne Memorial, you will find clean, open areas in which social distancing is enforced. Surfaces are regularly sanitized by our skilled environmental services staff and HEPA certified air filters are located throughout the hospital ensuring the cleanest air possible. Our staff has ample supply of protective personal equipment and face masks and hand sanitizers are readily available to our patients. We look forward to the day when we are able to lift our no visitors policy. Regardless of the COVID-19 virus, our friends, family, and neighbors are still suffering from heart disease, cancer, neurological problems, and much more. Please don't delay your important health care needs any longer. Schedule your services at Wayne Memorial Hospital today, where your health means everything to us. Our customers comes first at First Franklin Financial. It's not just a slogan, it's the way we do business. Since 1941, we've been helping our friends and neighbors in the Southeast with their financial needs. We offer personal loans, bill consolidation loans, and more. So stop by our office today. We're conveniently located at 1074 North Macon Street, or give us a call at 912-427-4237. You can also start your application online at www.1ffc.com. All loan terms and applicable APR depends on meeting our underwriting and income criteria for the loan size requested. It may require collateral. Georgia Residential Mortgage License number 5656. 837 here at the Big Dog WIFOFM. Let's get an update from Fox News Radio. Black and blue. I'm Chris Foster, Fox News. Police brutality, especially against African Americans, is the subject of a House Judiciary Committee hearing today. Set to testify, George Floyd's brother and family lawyer, Benjamin Crump, along with former Secret Service agent and Fox News contributor, Dan Bongino. The hearing comes as some cities consider plans to defund police departments. Democratic Representative James Clyburn pushed back on that idea on Fox's Neil Cavuto. Get rid of the rotten apples. It will ruin the whole barrel. If you don't, the police chief of Houston, Texas, is expected to testify that defunding police could ultimately increase the need for police services in the poorest communities. Rachel Sutherland, Fox News. During a peaceful march in Franklin Township, New Jersey, Monday, a group of counter protesters yelled things like Black Lives Matter to no one, with one man pretending to kneel on another's neck to mock how George Floyd died. The man identified as the one doing the kneeling is now fired from his job at FedEx. Another is suspended from his job as a prison corrections officer. It was primary day in five states with some people waiting hours to vote in parts of Nevada with even more problems in Georgia. Many people who voted in Georgia's primary had a really hard time doing it. We got uh, uh, notifications that the machines were not working and that they were going to try to rectify the situation. Then we waited another couple hours after that. Georgia's primary was postponed twice amid concerns about COVID-19. The Georgia Secretary of State, a Republican, says he's investigating problems, but Kamala Harris is already ruling. Voting machines down, limited provisional ballots, hours-long lines. Voter suppression is happening right now across Georgia, particularly in black communities. Fox's Peter Ducey. Hospitals in Arizona are told to reactivate emergency coronavirus plans. Cases and hospitalizations are spiking there and in other southwestern states. America's listening to Fox News.
America has never been so divided. Now, David Horowitz's Blitz exposes the media war on President Trump and their secret agenda to stop him. Already a number one bestseller, Mark Levin says Blitz is indispensable. Mike Huckabee says you need it for the 2020 election. Blitz is in bookstores or get the free offer and save $28. Call 800 Newsmax. That's 800 Newsmax. Or go to Blitz411.com. Blitz411.com. Get David Horowitz's Blitz today. We're all in uncharted territory looking for ways to support our communities. At Dell Technologies, we're making sure small businesses have the right tech solutions. Dell Technologies advisors are here for you. From helping small businesses stay connected and productive while working remotely with Windows 10 and Microsoft Teams to rapidly deploying remote work solutions that limit upfront costs with Dell Financial Services. We're standing by you every step of the way. Call 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. The stepfather of two children missing since last fall was arrested after a police search of his property. Seven-year-old Joshua and 17-year-old Tylee have not been seen since September. Their mother, Lori Vallow, married Chad Daybell right after Chad's wife died also last fall, and they've been under investigation over her death ever since. Lori's been charged with child abandonment and obstructing an investigation, but now after getting a search warrant for Daybell's home, Rexburg Assistant Police Chief Gary Hagan says he's been arrested. The uh, investigators and detectives have recovered uh, what's believed to be human remains that are uh, not identified at this time. Vallow and Daybell are apocalyptic end-of-days believers, and Vallow's former best friend said she was convinced the children were no longer alive. Jessica Rosenthal, Fox News. South Korea's government announces it will press charges against two activist groups floating anti-North Korean government leaflets and bottles of rice over the border. Those propaganda balloons have been used for years, but South Korean leadership has been trying to promote more cooperation with the North. The North Korean government has cut off communications with the South, citing the balloons as a reason. Progress is reported in talks to have a Major League Baseball season. The MLB Players Association offering up an 89-game regular season to the league Tuesday, still in quest of the full prorated salaries they have wanted as part of these negotiations, stemming from a good-faith agreement set back in March. This latest offer follows Major League Baseball's Monday, proposing a 76-game season, but with prorated pay deducted by 25% for each player. Now, these two new proposals are as close as both the league and the union have come in recent weeks to agreeing for a 2020 campaign. At one point, MLB was seeking only a 50-game season, while the MLB Players Union wanted as many as 114 games, including their full prorated salaries. Matt Napolitano, Fox News. The AMC movie theater chain announces plans to reopen its 1,000 locations next month where it's allowed. Seating will be limited to between 25 and 50 percent capacity. With fewer new movies to see, a lot of big new releases are delayed due to the pandemic. I'm Chris Foster. This is Fox News. Tired of living in pain? If so, come to Smart Physical Therapy located across from Dr. Hendricks behind the hospital. At Smart, we take pride in providing our patients with the one-on-one care that they need and deserve using advanced manual therapy techniques such as dry needling and manipulative therapy. Our compassionate and knowledgeable team can help you achieve the most optimal outcome. We will now be offering a free informational session every Friday from 12 until 2 on expectations following surgery. We'll be there one-on-one to answer any questions you may have. If you're looking to have surgery, give us a call to set up a free pre-op appointment. Remember, it's your choice where to go for your physical therapy needs, so choose Smart Physical Therapy. Our number is 559-2071. 559-2071. Again, 559-2071. Ask for Garrett Pye, Clayton Connors, or Nick Child. Smart Physical Therapy. 843 here at the Big Dog WIFOFM. Let's get a look at your GNN Weather Center forecast. Good morning. Patchy fog and haze early, a partly sunny day. South breeze later, 10 to 15. Another 50% chance of locally heavy showers and thunderstorms, highs, low 90s. Tonight, mostly cloudy, 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms, low 70s. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms, low 90s. Friday, chance of showers and thunderstorms, only mid 80s. Georgia meteorologist John Weatherby in the GNN Weather Center. River 8-4 steady, 8.4 feet steady, Altamaha River. High tide at uh, 1234, 5.9 feet low at 636, sunset at 832. 7575 here at the Big Dog WIFO. That's your GNN Weather Center forecast. Matthew 18:28. Jesus said, Come to me, all whom are weary, and I will give you rest. Brought to you by the Odom Baptist Church. 
This is Richard Johnson from Wayne County Emergency Management. Please remember to keep Wayne safe by continuing to observe social distancing and other good health guidelines. Remain at least six feet apart at all times. Wash your hands frequently for at least 20 seconds, especially having come in contact with commonly touched surfaces such as doorknobs, light switches, telephones, sinks, faucets, and countertops. Please call for Sneeve only into a tissue or elbow. This message is brought to you by Wayne County Commission, the Cities of Joseph Odom and Scriven, the Chamber of Commerce, IDA, Emergency Management, Board of Education, Wayne Memorial Hospital, and Rayonair Advanced Materials. Tired of living in pain? If so, come to Smart Physical Therapy located across from Dr. Hendricks behind the hospital. At Smart, we take pride in providing our patients with the one-on-one care that they need and deserve using advanced manual therapy techniques such as dry needling and manipulative therapy. Our compassionate and knowledgeable team can help you achieve the most optimal outcome. We will now be offering a free informational session every Friday from 12 until 2 on expectations following surgery. We'll be there one-on-one to answer any questions you may have. If you're looking to have surgery, give us a call to set up a free pre-op appointment. Remember, it's your choice where to go for your physical therapy needs, so choose Smart Physical Therapy. Our number is 559-2071, 559-2071. Again, 559-2071. Ask for Garrett Pye, Clayton Connors, or Nick Child. Smart Physical Therapy. 846 on this Wednesday morning with WIFO-FM. Time to focus on the family with Jim Daly. That's brought to you this morning by Neesmith Chevrolet. We're doing it up big at Neesmith Chevy Buick GMC in Jessup. We're talking big savings, big rebates, and one of the biggest truck inventories in the South. Save up to $13,000 on new Chevy and GMC trucks. We're even offering 0% financing for up to 84 months. That's how you do it big. See us today at Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC, Highway 341 in Jessup, or head to neesmithjessup.net, where you can shop, click, and drive from the comfort of your own home, and we'll schedule your delivery. Chevy, find new roads. When you think about it, it's amazing that the United States and Japan are allies. After all, we were fierce enemies during World War II. We battled each other for dominance throughout the Pacific, and we killed each other by the thousands. If any two nations had a reason to hate each other, it would be Japan and the United States. And yet, after the war, our countries reconciled in a way that likely seemed impossible before. The ability for enemies to become allies is good news if you feel like you're at war in your marriage. Even if regrettable decisions have been made and you both feel like you've got plenty of reason to hate each other, there's still hope. There really is. Programs like Focus on the Family's Hope Restored are tremendously successful. We're experts at helping couples bring an end to conflict instead of an end to their marriages. Of course, that's not easy. In fact, restoring your marriage may be the hardest thing you ever do. But I encourage you to seek help anyway. If not with Hope Restored, then with someone else. Get on a path to healing. Let someone teach you how to build a marriage that thrives and opens the door to a whole new future for your family. Only you can limit your potential. Will you humble yourself? Will you put in the work? With a little grit and a lot of faith, your marriage can rise out of the ashes of war and flourish. For Focus on the Family, I'm Jim Daly. Text us to be- Our customers comes first at First Franklin Financial. It's not just a slogan, it's the way we do business. Since 1941, we've been helping our friends and neighbors in the Southeast with their financial needs. We offer personal loans, bill consolidation loans, and more. So stop by our office today. We're conveniently located at 1074 North Macon Street, or give us a call at 912-427-4237. You can also start your application online at www.1ffc.com. All loan terms and applicable APR depends on meeting our underwriting and income criteria for the loan size requested. It may require collateral. Build your residential mortgage licensee, number 5656. I was tired of my kitchen, but I wasn't sure how to fix it, so I called Kitchen Tune-Up. They offer three levels of service, cabinet reconditioning, refacing, and custom cabinet packages. They helped me decide on a strategy that made the most sense for me. And because every franchise is locally owned and operated, I worked with the business owner, not some part-timer. Kitchen Tune-Up did more than remodel my kitchen. Kitchen Tune-Up remodeled my expectations. South First Street in Jessup. Call 912-424-8907, 424-8907. 
Rebuilding a home can be expensive. Many homeowners don't realize that their insurance may not provide them with enough coverage to build the same home in the same location. Country Financial is just one of a few insurance companies that offer insurance that covers the replacement cost of your home, even if that amount is higher than the policy limit. Call Sean O'Quinn's office today, 912-588-1051, to find out more about our homeowner's insurance. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company and Country Casualty Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Must qualify for additional replacement cost coverage. Minimum insurance to value requirements. Whether you're involved in an accident or just need a tow, request or call Grant Lewis Towing, 912-427-0857. We pride ourselves with excellent response times, honest and courteous service. With over 40 years experience, we are second to none. So get hooked up with Grant Lewis Towing, 912-427-0857. Operators Grant Lewis and Lincoln Jones. Well, three old Lincoln just supervises. Grant Lewis Towing, 24-hour high-quality service for Jessup and Wayne County. 8.50, until on this Wednesday morning, state news from GNN on WIFO. I'm Rob Stadler. Georgia's Secretary of State is downplaying problems with the state's new voting machines on this primary election day. Brad Raffensperger says most counties have been operating fine with the exception of some long lines in the morning. We have heard about the systemic failures in Fulton County, which is uh, obviously it's frustrating for the voters and frustrating for us that they just don't seem to be able to get it right. He blames the counties for delivering the wrong machines to locations and not properly training poll workers. The polls are open until 7 tonight. Meanwhile, Georgia House Speaker David Ralston plans to start an investigation into irregularities in today's primary, especially in Fulton. He's concerned about reports of voting equipment not working and absentee ballots not being received by voters. Atlanta's mayor is joining Oprah Winfrey for a town hall about the current state of America. A two-night special airs on the media mogul's TV network, OWN, at 9 tonight and tomorrow night. Keisha Lance Bottoms will speak, as will former former Georgia candidate for governor Stacey Abrams. Winfrey will talk with activists about systemic racism and where to go from here. An elderly Connecticut woman is sentenced for vandalism at a Georgia military base. GNN Scott Kimbler has more. Elizabeth McAllister is 80 years old and is one of seven defendants calling themselves the King Bay Plowshares. The group are activists and snuck onto Kings Bay Submarine Base in April of 2018 with hammers and baby bottles filled with her own blood. McAllister was accused of conspiracy, destruction of government property, depredation of government property, and trespassing. News 4 Jax reports she was ordered to pay $35,000 in restitution and serve three years of supervised release. Scott Kimbler, GNN News. With the Georgia News Network, I'm Rob Stadler. Jones Prescription Shop, just like the Atlanta Braves, have all the bases covered for your prescription needs. Jones Prescription Shop offers fast, friendly service, specialty packaging, vaccinations, and they have a great selection of over-the-counter medications. For your convenience, they also have a drive through and delivery service available. Jones Prescription Shop accepts most insurance plans. Give them a call at 427-8825. Come give their hometown service a try. Jones Prescription Shop, 101 Peachtree Street, Jessup. Proud sponsor of your Atlanta Braves. Better than ever, Reedy Creek Steakhouse. Tender USDA hand-cut steaks, Georgia-grown quail, seafood, ribeye steak, burgers, unlimited soup and salad bar, great dessert, and their signature bread and cheese spread. Reedy Creek Steakhouse, Clifford Jones Road, just off Cable Road near Scriven. 912-579-6773. 912-579-6773. Open Thursdays 530 to 9, Friday and Saturday 530 to 10. South Georgia's best-kept secret, Reedy Creek Steakhouse. Come on down to the creek. Following all COVID-19 distancing and sanitation protocols and guidelines. This is Charles Huffman at Jessup Housing Outlet. If you haven't been to Jessup Housing Outlet lately, you're missing out on a large selection of new and exciting floor plans from the nation's top manufacturers like Clayton, Fleetwood, Scottbilt, and Homes of Merit. All of our homes feature modern kitchens and appliances, R60 and higher insulation values, thermal windows, and energy-efficient heat pumps. 